I'm really enjoying a CSS function called clamp. It's better than using a width property because you can set a minimum as well as a maximum value, which are the clamps. Picture in your mind how you might use clamps when woodworking to limit the movement of something like your circular saw. You can take a look at the documentation right here. I feel like the examples are a little unclear, so let's take a look at how it works. Now you can use it to limit all types of values whenever you use properties like length, frequency, angles, and all the other ones. That means that you can use measurements like percentages or any of the viewport measurements. So it's more flexible than just adding in a hard value. Let's say you have a hero image for your website. Now to make this fit in the width of the display, you might try doing something like setting the width to 100%. But sometimes you don't want the image to go the full width. You may want some constraints to that width. So let's see how that works. You may want some constraints to that width. And this is where clamp can come in handy. Now doing something like this will take the image and it rephrase. Now this will make the image try to be 100% of the width of the container most of the time, but also no smaller than 800 pixels and no larger than 1200 pixels. Normally I take care of this by creating a div that contains the image, but clamp is letting me put this directly on the image. So that's less and more flexible code. If I wanted to use something like this for images in the main content section, the problem here is that responsive images can get too big or too small. So a percentage will work well, but you can also use a percentage as well as a minimum and maximum value. So here my image would try to be 50% of the width of the container, whatever that content section was, but also be no smaller and no larger than 600 pixels. And we've all been to websites where setting the image to 100% makes it way too big when somebody has a huge screen. And you can also use this with fonts to create responsive font sizes. The typical way we do this is by using a complex calc function, but with the clamp function, it's easy to establish a range of values. So here I'm setting the minimum to two M's and the maximum to 3.2 M's. And I'm asking the font to try to be always four units of the viewport width. Now, one more thing, this has got pretty good browser support. So I think that unless you're supporting really old browsers, it's something that you can start using today. All right, so let's take a look at how this works in a practical example. So I've got two links right here. So you can go to this URL and make sure you hit the M key for the menu and click on the CSS clamp item. And you can find the beginning version of a CSS code pen right here. And let's take a look at the HTML. You can see that we have an image tag right here, which is this image. And then we have a main with a class of content. And then we have a headline underneath that as well as an image following that. And then just some text so that we can show how that image can flow there. So let's go ahead and make this a lot bigger here. And the first thing that I'll do is I'm going to target the image with a class of hero. And in here, I'm going to set the display element to be block and the margin to be zero on auto. That way it'll center that image. And as I mentioned, you can try to make the width of the image 100% of the container, but that would get really big, especially on large screens. And sometimes you don't want it to be that large. We can use clamp right here, and then we'll leave the 100 in the middle and set up some minimum and maximum values. So I'll say no smaller than about 800 pixels, try to be 100% most of the time, and then get no bigger than 1200 pixels. And now the 1200 pixels, because my uh, window is so big, um, is limiting this right here. So that looks pretty good. Now, what about this image right here on some content? So what I'm going to do then is type in content and then an image tag after that. And so in here, I'm going to float this image to the right. And then I will set the width of the image to try to be Let's make that have clamps or just clamp of first 300 pixels. So no smaller than 300 pixels. And then also no bigger than about 600 pixels. And that should look pretty good. And if we make this a lot smaller, you'll see that it'll try to keep within those two sizes. It'll never get smaller than about 300 pixels. It'll just sort of push the text sideways and then it'll never get much bigger than 600 pixels. 
So that's pretty cool. Just a couple of little limits. And I think this is definitely more readable. Let's see what we can do with the font. So this headline right here to target it, I'm going to say content H1. And here we'll do font size. And again, we'll use the clamp. And then we'll use 2Ms as the lower size. And then for viewport width and 3.2Ms as the upper size. So you can see that it gets bigger. And if I make this window smaller, it should start shrinking. And that's pretty good, but it's not going to shrink any smaller than 2Ms, which is great. It's a fantastic way of creating responsive font as well as image sizes and you can use it just about everywhere. This is definitely way more readable than trying to use complex calc functions and just as compatible.